Welcome to Runtime Software's Drive Image XML. This is a product that we have released free of charge. It will allow you to back up a drive while the operating system is running, including the system drive. The one thing you must remember is that you cannot restore the system drive while the OS is running. You must create a bootable CD or slave your boot drive into another machine and restore the image at that point. This is the welcome window. From here, you can choose to backup, restore, or browse your existing backup. In this case, we will click on Backup. As you can see, just move the mouse over to the Backup button and click it. It will progress you to the next screen. The software will scan for all available physical and logical drives. This step will proceed much faster in the software as we have slowed it down so you can see exactly what is happening. You are now able to select which drive you want to back up in this step. In this case, we want to back up the C drive. You can see the types of file systems, the capacity of the drive, and the percentage of the drive used. The percentage used in this case is 8%, so as you can see in the drive details below, the used bytes is roughly 9.5 gigabytes without compression. You can see lots of other information in this window including the file systems, the bytes used, the free bytes, and the total bytes. You can also see the drive name, the partition number, and the start sector of the partition. All primary partitions start at sector 63 because the first 63 sectors are the boot sector and partition tables. For more information about this, Google boot sectors and partition tables. Be sure to click on the drive you want to back up and then press next. This window will start the backup wizard. It will show you what drive you're going to back up. Please be sure this is the correct drive and press next. In this step, we will be selecting the backup location in several options. At the top of the screen, you can see that it says directory. This is where the file is going to be stored. You can click on the folder icon to show your computer's drive letters. You can browse this information to decide where you will store your backup. In this case, we are going to store the files in our F drive. You will now have several options to choose from, the first being raw mode. This will make a sector-for-sector -sector image regardless of how much data is on the drive. If you have a 120 gigabyte drive and only 9.5 gigabytes of data, this option will make a 120 gigabyte image file. You will have issues when trying to restore this image to another drive that is larger as the drive will only report being 120 gigabytes regardless of the size. You will then need to use a partition manager software to increase the size of this partition. You should not use this option unless you have a specific reason to do so. The next option is split image files. This will break your files into 650 megabyte pieces so you can store them on CDs or DVDs. The other reason for this option is that if your destination drive is FAT32, it cannot create single files larger than 4 gigabytes. So if you have a destination that is FAT32, as we do in this case, be sure to always select split image files. The next option is compressed. This will compress the data on the image so that your backup may be smaller than the data on the drive. The amount of compression depends on what is on the drive. If the drive is full of MP3 and JPEG files, then the compression will be close to zero since these are already compressed files. However, if you have Photoshop files, Office, or even text documents, these can be greatly compressed and will take up even less room on the final image. Working in the data recovery business, it is best to compress the data, especially if you have more than one copy of an image on one drive. And the chance you need data recovery, the compression will allow you to recover the backup file instead of the data in the backup file. This is a complex discussion we will possibly go over in a later movie. The next option is to try volume locking first. This tries to lock the volume so nothing can be written to it while a backup proceeds. This will not work for a system drive as the software itself, as well as many other things, are using the operating system to run processes, so it will fail and automatically try volume shadowing next. Locking the volume works on backing up secondary drives as long as something is not using that drive for temporary storage or some other function. If this fails, again, it will just try to create a shadow of the drive to do that backup. The Try Volume Shadow Services First creates a shadow of the drive. A shadow is just what you would expect. It is a copy of the file system that you can back up so you continue to use the operating system while the backup is running. It will not save any changes to the files that you are currently making though. It only saves the data as it was stored in the shadow. 
So if you start the backup and then check your email and receive 20 new messages, those messages will not be in the backup as they were written after the shadow took place. The file name option is what the name of the backup file will be. This can be anything you wish. If you plan on making more than one backup per drive, you should make sure that you are using the compression option and add the date to the end of the backup file name. That way you're sure that you are using the correct backup when it comes time to do a restore. Once you have everything as you wish, you should then click the next button. Now the backup progress window will appear. It will create a .dat and a .xml file based on the file name you chose. Since try volume locking was selected, it will try to lock the volume first and fail. Then it will try and create a shadow and succeed. You will know so by the shadow name being created in the software proceeding. If it fails, then there is another problem. There are many things that can cause a shadow to fail. If that happens, you should Google the error that you have received to see if you can find a solution. Okay, the shadow was created and the backup has started. You can see the time passed and the time remaining. The time remaining is dynamic and will adjust itself on the fly. The time it takes to back up the drive depends on many things, including whether or not you're using the operating system, which you should not do. It also depends on whether the drive you're backing up to is internal or external. Writing to an external drive ten generally takes about four times longer than writing to an internal drive. After the backup finishes, it will tell you that it is completed successfully. You can now click Finish. At this time, you can easily open your Windows Explorer to verify the data has been written to its location. From here, you can select all the files and see a full size of the backup. In this case, we've created a backup size of a little less than 5.5 gigs out of 9.5 gigabyte drive with compression. There are a few things to remember. You cannot write this data back to the C drive directly. It would be like trying to change a motor that is still running. You'll need to remove the drive from the system and install it as a slave in a working system and then restore the data at that point, or you can create a bootable CD. You can find all the information you need on doing this on our website at runtime.org slash p like paul, e like edward, b like boy dot htm. Again, that's runtime.org slash peb dot htm. You can then select Browse from the main window to view the contents of your backup. It will open a window for you to select the drive that the backup is stored on. Select the XML file that you just created in the backup and select Open or double click on the XML file. This will open the file and all the contents of the backup will proceed to be read at that time. Once this is finished, then you'll be able to browse through all of your information that was originally on the drive inside the backup. From here you can open files and even extract files without having to restore the entire backup. There you have it, a full backup in case of emergency. If you have any questions about what you've seen, feel free to email us at support at runtime.org. Please do not contact us by phone as this is a free product and we do not offer phone support for it. Again, feel free to contact us by email at support at runtime.org.